here dropping in on you. This is going to be a real quick one. Uh, before I get started, I want to remind everybody uh, that we are definitely in the middle of an ongoing uh, fundraiser. If you believe in the work we do here at the Odyssey Project, definitely uh, go to the description box and find ways that you can support the work we do. Uh, you can click the link and give. You can give through our Cash App account for the Odyssey Project. Uh, we're also uh, taking functional uh, laptops, not necessarily desktops, but if you, you want to send one, you can uh, for our computer literacy courses for young black males specifically and we're expanding it uh, to uh, eventually reach outside of that program for computer literacy throughout the community but uh, that's also one way to give but uh, definitely we need your support now on to the matter at hand uh, I'm going to take a very light approach to this uh, so those of you who are you know a lot like me and normally approach everything uh, on this matter from a more serious note, forgive me. Uh, uh, I just sort of decided, you know, after watching Dave Chappelle's special last year, uh, when he called Ju uh, Jesse Smollett, uh, Juicy Smollett, uh, that just kind of stuck with me and it made me look at just how comical it was, but uh, to look at how things were done. And so, unless you've been on The Rock, you've probably heard by now that uh, Justice Smollett was found guilty on five of the six charges he was facing that basically surround uh, the fact that he uh, fabricated a story about being attacked by thugs because of his sexual preference. One, um, uh, the sentencing hasn't taken place. Uh, a lot of people believe that because of his, uh, you know, the lack of a, a criminal cr criminal background that he'll probably end up with uh, probation. There are others that believe because of the ex uh, exceptionally high level of exposure that he'll get some type of jail time that will still pretty much um, uh, equate to being a slap on the wrist. Uh, I'm not here because I want to see uh, that dude do time or to uh, necessarily attack him. I want, I'm here to point out a very simple truth and to warn my people to stand down. Uh, we tend to get involved in everything. We take, tend to take on everyone else's fight. And while there are a bunch of people running around accusing me of being a race baiter, let's be very clear. What Je Jesse Smollett did had absolutely nothing to do with race. He played his gay card. He took uh, the momentum that had been built uh, through certain LGTBQ uh, uh, agendas, uh, he took it, and by his own admission, his own admission and his own words, he was trying to be what he called the gay Tupac. Um, he tried to fabricate something uh, based on a perception of something that I think was authentic. Both, you know, whether we look at Tupac and the positive sense of the light that we look at the troubled uh, person he was, whether you look at uh, some of the contrasts in his principles based on his music, uh, he was authentically who he was. He was trying, he was a, to me, a young black male trying to find himself having an understanding of some things at a very deep level, but also being influenced by an environment around him. And it showed, it showed a lack of immaturity in some areas, but it also pr uh, produced an unbelievable view into his genius and his ability to communicate uh, the reality of so many people who looked like him. Uh, it wasn't a fabricated uh, identity. It was him being exposed to the world in his truest sense. Uh, you can't repeat that. You can't uh, uh, synthetically produce it or reproduce it. You either are who you are. You don't attempt in this world to be the next anybody because you cheat yourself. You deceive the world and you miss the mark but let's be very clear this has nothing to do with race so don't get pulled into it he walked in and played the card that he identified with the most by again his own admission 
his sexual preference, uh, his sexual identity, his sexual integration, any way that you want to define it that makes it acceptable for you or whoever is, is fine with me. But at the end of the day, it had any, absolutely nothing to do with the fact that he was black. It had everything to do with him trying to find a place and elevate himself above where he f saw himself in the world. Um, and he decided to play that card and it got pulled. And now he's going to have to deal with the consequences of it. Some people are saying that his career is over. Some people are saying that that's not for me to call. Uh, I wasn't a big enough fan of him uh, to, you know, be emotional. Very few people I, I, I have an appreciation of that I'm emotionally invested in. I'm just sorry. Um, that's their life. They're living their life. If they do something that I love, you know, from uh, there are some singers that I absolutely uh, admire. They were Joe Thomas is one uh, more affectionately known as Joe. Have a great appreciation of. I come from a musical family. I love vocal talent. Uh, Jasmine Sullivan is another one. Uh, Kelly Price is another one. And I can go on down the line just in the music genre alone. Uh, Will Smith as an actor. Uh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy as uh, a comedian, Dave Chappelle definitely as a comedian, uh, Denzel Washington as uh, a thespian. She, forget just actor, but this dude is a beast. But I'm not emotionally invested in any of them. That's their lives. They created those lives. I'm, I'm invested in making sure I'm the best version of myself. So I don't get emotionally attached or emotionally invested on any area, but I definitely am not going to be emotionally invested on some crap that this dude pulled. But my whole uh, observation of him is the role he played in Empire. And again, from, from an agenda that was created and put him in a light where he saw how maybe he could exploit the situation. He played a gay uh, uh, singer or performer or whatever on Empire, uh, a show that I didn't allow to be played in my house after watching maybe two episodes of it. Uh, and then reading what Lee Daniels had said about how he was <clears throat> going to use it to push uh, the gay agenda. It's not that I have hatred towards my gay brothers and sisters. I just don't believe that agenda serves the black community well. And I don't believe it's something you push on anybody under a certain age. And I think that that's a problem with the LGBTQ agenda right now is that nobody's off limits. And I think that's dangerous. Uh, but what I'm here about is what I noticed about it in a show that portrayed everybody in the mo most horrible light, so many black stereotypes were presented. I found that the, 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 the one character that had redeeming qualities that you would want to see had uh, morals, that had uh, a sense of care and concern outside of themselves. They weren't pursuing a narcissistic uh, agenda was a gay black man. The gay black man could be the only one that was pure, the only one that had a great heart, the only one that cared about other people besides themselves. Everybody else was out for themselves. Everybody else was dirty, killers, murderers, selfish, messing with uh, other people's spouses and women's and, 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 and everything else that you could find under the sun that could betray us in the black light. The only person there was a gay person. And I think that, again, based on Lee Daniels' own admission, that was not an accident. And so when I see him outside of the scope of that role, uh, that's the first thing that pops into mind. So when he did what he did, you know, when I first heard about it, I was like, man, that's messed up. Somebody jumped dude because he was gay. But then when the truth comes out, and you find out that it didn't happen. I mean, honestly, if I was a part of the gay community, I would be pissed because that could be something that could set back what they're doing. Uh, that's not my fight, again, and that's why I'm here. That's not our fight. They have actually progressed further along in their quest for power and relevance in this, in, in this, in this country than we have. And they've done it in a significantly shorter period of time. Uh, they don't need our support. They don't need us to stand up and fight for them. Uh, you know, again, and if anybody knows me knows that, I'm telling you, if you got people who are part of that community and they're part of your family, love them. Love your family. Do not 
uh, disown your family, but, but teach the principles you believe in to your children. Uh, influence the principles you believe in to those who you have an ability to impact. Make your presence felt in a way that you make your impact. But love your people. Absolutely, unequivocally love your people. But what I'm going to tell you is, this isn't our fight. Whatever you do, don't get drawn to this. Because this is about to get hype. I see it already together. And the storms are brewing and everybody's starting to show up. Now, here's the thing I do want to bring up. And then I'll actually be done with this. Guess who shows up to his defense? Black Lives Matter. Now, we already know if we've actually done our homework, if we've actually looked into them way back to when they first came on the scenes and they first threw up their site uh, where, where they had built their minimum when they, momentum when they hijacked the grassroots movement that was taking place in Ferguson by real on-the-ground soldiers that were fighting for something they believed in that began with the spilling of the blood of Mike Brown. Uh, and then people start dying like Darren Seals. And then behind that, five other brothers who are, again, speaking the truth and exposing them. Black Lives Matter, if you went to their site, were de was definitely about anything but uh, protecting and preserving the lives of young black men. Uh, you couldn't find anything resembling the traditional black family on the site. You couldn't find anything resembling the support and edification of black, uh, black straight men on the site. Then you start to look at who the faces of the organization was, from the founders to D. Ray McPherson, all of them are part of the LGBTQ community. Interesting. So now Black Lives Matter shows up to fight a battle on behalf of somebody who created a situation that had absolutely nothing to do with being black. Is he black? Yes. But this isn't about a black man faking an attack uh, by somebody who attacked him because he was a black. This is about a gay man being in trouble because he lied about being attacked because he was a gay man. But who's at his defense? Black Lives Matter uh, has inserted themselves into uh, the equation to yell from the rooftops that he was railroaded. No, when you lie, you lie. I mean, you, you can't be railroaded when you've done something that you shouldn't have done. Are they making it bigger than it probably really is? Yes, but that's what happens when you have a little fame and you do something in a situation where you embarrass the police department for the third largest city in the country and think that obviously they're not going to fight back. You, you inserted yourself into a political arena without even realizing you were doing it. You were making a so social move, but you involved political components, whether you believe it or not. Police departments are political arms. They're political instruments. It's the way mayors and county judges manipulate and move and control situations. It's a manner of uh, understanding that at the top of the uh, chain of command and the, where the brass sit, that's all political. And you embarrassed them. And you didn't think that they were going to start picking up telephone calls and uh, people in certain offices were going to get it. You didn't think that people connected to it that didn't like it was going to make phone calls. You don't think people from Washington got wind of it and didn't make phone calls. Did you not think that it was going to be much bigger than it was simply because someone with enough notoriety made a story out of something that would have probably not even been a big deal if it had been an average person? But you use your celebrity and you tried to use your uh, sexual identity to put yourself into a position that you did not attain and you put yourself in a worse position to where now your freedom is in jeopardy and your career, that's on you. And black people need to know when to stand down. I'm not telling you who you should be a fan of. Like who you like, uh, because I do. Uh, I, like for the, I like them for the work they do. Uh, not necessarily for the lives they live unless I find out they're living some real shady ass lives that hurt people. And then we have to deal with that. But I'm not going to battle for them without knowing the whole story and without it making sense to me because I'm using my emotional resources, I'm using my mental and intellectual resources. And in, in some instances, these people are showing up and using financial resources to fight a battle for a person that literally put themselves in that situation. Uh, we've got enough on our plate. I talk to you about this each and every day, the things that we have on our plate that we should be focusing on, and this isn't one of them. 
we have young black women disappearing at an alarming rate, a lot of them pregnant. We have a lot of babies dying. I talked to you about that last week, under the age of 15, that are dying for senseless and stupid reasons. We have unbridled violence overall in our community where our elderly, our women, and our children aren't safe. Those are the things we need to be focused on. We are in a situation where our young children are being indoctrinated and miseducation, miseducated in a way that does not uh, serve to produce anything conducive to them ever being truly liberated and empowered. Those are the things we need to focus on. We need to focus on uh, a high uh, mortality rates uh, among black women giving birth. <clears throat> We need to focus on high infant mortality rates among black babies. There's a lot that we need to be focusing on that actually has to do with us. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said in the beginning, if you love the work we're doing here at the Odyssey Project, go to the description box and show some love. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a nice week.